Okay, so this next lesson is about standard form and expanded form and fractions when using decimals. So we'll get started. We started with standard form with large numbers and now we're going to switch gears and look at smaller numbers. So for example, we're going to look at 4.1 in standard form. And this number reads 4 and 1 tenth. And you know that because in the ones column, that's where you have your 4. You put the decimal there and the 1 falls in the tenths column. So you know it reads 4.1 and that's 4 and 1 tenth. So let's move on. If you have 11 decimal 4, 5, the way that you figure out the stand, well, this is written in standard form, but the way you figure out this number is you know that it's 11 and that it's decimal 4, 5, and the 5 falls in the hundredths column. So you have 11 and 45 hundredths. So 11 and it's 45 hundredths. Eleven and forty-five hundredths, and that's because the five falls into the hundredths category. Decimal zero six means that you have six hundredths, and it's for the same reason. The six falls into the hundredths column as well. The zero falls into the tenths column. The decimal zero one seven is a bit different because the seven falls into the thousandths column. So you're actually looking at a number that reads 17 thousandths. And again, it's because the final number in this situation, the seven, it falls into the thousandths category. So you have 17 thousandths. Moving on. 85th thousandths. Now, these are the numbers that are written and we have to convert them into standard form. So 85th thousands. If it's 85th thousands, you have to look at the final number and that five has to fall into the thousandths category. So you put the decimal 085. And you can double check this by going back to your place value and you see that three, that's tens, that's hundreds, and that's thousandths. And you know that 80, five thousandths looks like decimal zero eight five. Next question reads two and four hundred and eight thousandths. Well you know the two is going to be on the outside of the decimal so you put the two and then the decimal and four zero eight. You look to the eight. Is the eighth in the thousandth column? That's the third column and so you know that's the tens column is where the four, the tenths column is the four, the hundredths column is the zero, and the thousandths column is the eighth. So you know it looks two decimal four zero eight because the eight falls into the thousandths column. Forty-eight and forty-eight hundredths. Well we know the forty-eight is a whole number so we're going to write the forty-eight just like this on the end. So forty-eight and now you look to the final number and it's an 8, and we have to determine whether the 8 is in the hundred, the tenths, the hundredths, or the thousandths. So we know the 4 will be the tenths, and the 8 will be the hundredths. So we know it's 48 decimal 4, 8, and that's converting it. Let's move on. This is expanded form. Expanded form is a little bit different. It's where you take a number that's written <coughs> in standard notation, and you convert it to expanded form by expanding it to its fullest number. So in this situation, here's an example. This is 501. In expanded form, 501 looks like this. 500 plus 1. And that's 501. You've got the hundreds column taken care of. In this situation, the tens column, there's a zero there, so you don't have to worry about that. And you've got the ones covered in the one column. When you get to numbers with decimals, it's a similar situation. So in this situation, 234 decimal one looks like this. 200, you got that done, plus the 30, which takes care of the 30 in the tens column, plus the four, which takes care of the four in the ones column. And then you add the one tenth, and that takes care of the tenths column. The 34 decimal 5, 6 is similar. You do a 30 plus a 4 plus a decimal 5 in the tenths column plus, this is where it gets a bit tricky, decimal 0, 6. 
because you're talking about something in the hundreds column. And that hundreds column has to be represented by the proper number, which is 0, 06. So make sure that is going to be something that will be on the test, something you have to pay attention to. Let's keep going. Now we're going to talk about numbers and fractions. If we had a number <coughs> that is decimal 23, or decimal 23, sorry, decimal 23, we have to figure out what that number is in fraction form. Well, then you look again at the place value chart. In this situation, decimal 23, the 3 falls into the hundreds column. That means that you put 100 underneath it. So, you have decimal 23, and that changes into 23 over 100. And you know that because the 3 falls into the hundredths column. Let's keep going. If it's decimal 3, 6, it's the same as decimal 2, 3. You know that 6 falls in the hundredths column, so you put 36 over 100. Now the decimal 0, 4, 5, the 5 in this situation, it falls into the thousandth column right here. So I know it's going to be 45 over 1,000. So there's the three decimals, or the three zeros. Another way to, to look at it is to count the number of numbers that are behind the decimal here, 1, 2. And that's how many zeros are going to be in your answer as well. In this situation, 1, 2, 3. And you've got 1, 2, 3 zeros here. Final number down here, it's decimal 358. So you're going to put the number, which is 358. And it's over, how many numbers are here? 1, 2, 3. So you're going to make it over 1, 2, 3, which is 1,000. So there's a couple ways to look at that. Good. That is it for the three. We've got standard form. We've got expanded. And we've got fractions. And there's your lesson on the three. These will be on the test, so make sure you check them out and make sure you understand what you're doing. And good luck.